grey ones, as I said, 125 versus 150. So uh, they won't even stack. There you go. Thank you. Well, this goes to show that we can do at least self-produced bale. Buying bales, we have to use them when we buy them. Um, they're a little bit unreliable when it comes to um, putting them in that bale storage. So I, prob I would probably definitely skip that. But using a grab, which isn't my favouritest tool, does um, result in less bale chicanery and using the auto load trailer also results in less okay I'm gonna park this over here you are doing fine Okay, so this is still TMR, so good. Oh, come on, you can get through, trust me. Come on, with 450 horsepower, I should be able to uh, bend a couple of pieces of metal and force that through the gate. Okay, you're done, you're good. The cows are fed. The next cow thing, we have 52,000 litres of straw. We have an awful lot of food. I'm going to top that off. But I think I'll do that with the Aryan. Um, we can turn the mixer off. Excuse me. So all I've got left is straw, and those are 180 centimetre bales, so 11,000 litres each. You don't need many of them to go far. I mean, five of them will double what's in the cow shed at the moment. Okay, you're good, you're parked. Come on, drop it. Yes. So, John Deere is good. And the whole manure slurry thing is, it's really now at the point where, so long as I keep up with it, it's absolutely fine. We are at no risk of running too much of anything. Now, a couple of days ago, I did do a, a lot of trips of manure and pretty much took that um, collection trough down to about 20, 30,000 or 20,000 litres definitely less than a full truckload so uh, the slurry I'm still working on but I have discovered slurry mixes really well with straw and makes scary amounts of money which is one of the two reasons I've uh, planted so many fields of cereal for the next year is one is because we're just not producing enough of it for the grain mill to produce enough flour for our uh, bakery and two straw plus slurry is lots of money it's also a good amount of digestate as well 
which sort of creates the sad situation that canola needs a lot of uh, manure or you know, nitrogen. So it's one of the best crops for using up digestate and what have you. I could push the field um, sort of preload of nitrogen before I put the crop into sort of 150, 160, then plant the canola and then spray it with almost nothing. Whereas, um, oh, who's that? I can't read it because I'm blind. Um, that was Joe W Gaming Thirteen. Thank you for the follow. But yeah, if I just you know, if I bring a truckload whenever I'm coming down here. It sort of uh, keeps the BGA loaded. It makes us a little bit of money. Probably going to have to turn that on. Oh, let's turn off the wheat flour production. So yeah, grain mill is level one. The bakery is level two. Um, and... Got a feeling that works out to almost six months of production. Uh, that's 596, that's fine. This is negligible seeds and manure that doesn't go through much. This, we have slurry aboard, we have manure now. So we can activate the manure. But we go through this like, um, oh sorry, the manure recipe, 505 liters and 2400 cycles a month that's 800 cycles a day five eights of 40 that's about 400,000 liters of manure it'll process a day and the maximum capacity is 500 same with the slurry we look at the slurry 505 but if we then go down to straw and slurry um, it uses 505 still, but it makes a whole lot more of this stuff, and it goes through the straw like it was nothing. So 505, you make a lot of digestate, yeah, make a little bit of power, a little bit of methane. But straw and slurry, 200. and if you do silage and slurry, which is whole crop silage and slurry, it makes a ton of this. This is still just a thousand and it goes through the silage like crazy. But it all makes you money, which is why we've got 200,000 money and I'm really not spending it that fast. Normally, round about this time, while well, it's getting close to canola sell time um, in December and then we'll get some money have to do a contract or two in the next few days because we're just not going to make it to the end of the month and frankly that's not a problem now so yes that BGA does make us serious amounts of money but that said it's not you have to keep it fed and even now with the 150 odd cows or whatever it was that we have, um, I can't keep it in production 100%. Uh, and we're probably producing as much manure as we're producing slurry. So I just need to drain the slurry tank a bit more so that um, we can go a little bit longer. And I think I am going to service all of this uh, engine off jump out okay service that service that and service that and back out and you got that so, uh, clear the course, turn that off, 
and we can get this back to the farm. Oh, I just put the uh, John Deere in the in the maintenance shed. <laughs> ah, yeah, well, that is the thing. Well, I can take this back to the yard. Um, how's maintenance on this? This is actually fairly good condition, 94%. Yeah, this is fine. Um, so I'll drag the John Deere out the way, go and fill it up with some more manure. Put the roller in the maintenance shed. And then hitch the Arian up to the uh, bale shredder. Now we are very, very close to midday. So quite possibly I will be calling this. <gasps> Hit the Land Rover again. Careless. Actually, that one. So everything's fixed. I'll drag another. I will drag another uh, tank or cart of manure down to the BGA. But start that filling and. So we'll put the roller in the shed. Wrong way. Well, that was a complete mess up. Try that one again. And we were talking about editing um, the yards um, with the latest version of this map if you're playing you know, start from scratch or farm manager there's nothing in the yard now I have edited this um, the original yard we did have I think a shed probably like these um, there was one there facing that way and I think two or one or two over here as well so I deleted all the the sheds here and put in the garden and I deleted the shed there and put in the maintenance depot because it just made sense and uh, Apart from that, oh, and then very, very recently there was two sheds here, and I took, I had to take both of them out to fit the bale um, storage, so that was fine. And then obviously I added the little shed to put the food mixer and the bale shredder because they needed a home. And they had been in the shed that was there. But, uh, that was the thing. Okay, back this to here. Because for some reason the storage unload point is here. And that's full. I'm going to skip that for a minute. And I'm going to get... Hmm, Oh, how about eight? It's fine. And uh, oh, engine. That's a good thing, is it not? Okay, so these bales are the biggest they can be makes grabbing them a little bit ooh, a 
little bit tricksy. Okay. So again, rather than driving the um, the bale shredder around all the time, I did find I had to do it this way with the spikes because the uh, spikes would not let the bales go. So you would end up with the spike stuck on the bale and the only way to get rid of it was to uh, shred it. So that's what we'll do. There we go. And again, this is game delay time. Oh, sorry. Um, okay. Okay, yes, sorry, Joe. Um, unfortunately, my setup is my PC is in front of me, which is where the game is being played, and I have another PC that's monitoring chat. So sometimes I'm a little bit late reacting. Um, thanks, 44 Ranger, for filling. Um, so this is a solo map, it's a stream I do every Saturday and have done since I started streaming. Um, I play on PC. Um, what maps do I recommend for console? Um, This map is Maypole. It's a fun map. There is a new map by the same um, map maker um, called Glen Leithen. Um, so it will be similar in style. Glen Leithen is in Scotland and has a special um, weather setup. So it's very Scottish like very dark winters light through a lot of the summer um, I do like the old stream farm the old stream farm has been in the last three possibly four um, farming simulator games um, it's a small farm map um, so it's the fields are very cheap you don't need big equipment so if if you're into sort of a couple of small tractors and very small equipment it's not a um, what's the word for it it's not a a problem because um, it's like the fields are really small even with a three meter cedar you can have a field seeded in 30 minutes um, whereas if you go on some american maps where the fields are massive you then it'll take you an hour even with big equipment it will take you a long time it's one of the reasons i generally avoid most of the american maps i live here um, I'm probably more familiar seeing American farming going on, but I'm from the UK, so I'm familiar. I'm somewhat familiar with that. When I lived in the UK, I didn't pay an awful lot of attention to farming at the time. Um, but it's just farms like oh yeah, maps like this. The fields are a reasonable size. You can get a reasonable amount done. Um, if I pull up this map. Um, And look at this. That's actually a good thing. Oh, we own all of the fields with the blue numbers. I've harvested both of these. Um, I've planted this one, this one, um, and this one in the last three hours. That one, that one, that one, and that one. Oh, actually that one. 
So 57, 41, 60 and 59. We planted those in the last 3-4 hours. Uh, 62, 63, 61 and 58 I planted part of them I think last week. 49 and 50 were the previous month so they were a little while ago. Um, but these have both been harvested in five hours with a forage harvester which is a slow piece of equipment. Um, let's pop that out. So it, it's kind of like you can get a lot done. You're not in one field for the entire three hour stream, which I have, I've seen some people will release a video that's two hours long and they get halfway through harvesting the first field because it's American and even with a big harvester it just it's not you know, it, it just can't work it um, and then you, know, you harvest it then you've got to bale all the straw and that's going to take you four or five hours as well it's I kind of like I like farms which have reasonable sized fields but as I said, something like Old Stream Farm, they're small fields, but you can't get big equipment going around the map very easily. So it, it's just a whole, it's a whole different thing. But it's, it's sort of, it depends what you like playing with, I guess. Uh, Welker Farms, I believe, is one of these big US fields type map. Um, Carmsden and... Um, What's his latest one? Court Farms are based on real locations in England and as such can be very frustrating trying to manoeuvre equipment around the fields because it's narrow lanes which in real life you're literally looking at. You drive down a, a country lane in a tractor, you're trying not to have hedge hedges hitting the side of your tractor and scratching the paintwork because it, it really is that close. Um, I did that wrong and grab that, lift it up. There you go, that's how to do it. Um, I mean I find Cavalier Roy has a good setup for um, it's fairly easy getting in and out of the uh, out of the fields. The only problem I would say is that the map hedges have these posts in the middle, which, if you take a chainsaw to them, makes the hedge go away, which is a nice feature. Unfortunately, workers do not like them, um, and if you're playing on a um, on a console you have no script mods like Courseplay that would allow you to uh, create workers that can actually cope with the fields and just stay within the fields when they're turning around. So yeah, good points and bad points. Oxygen David's maps have non-collision hedges. I believe originally um, he initially he didn't have collisions and then it became a problem because um, the bales would roll away because they're typical um, yes I have seen the entrance to the court farm shop as well um, but Although you can drive around, that you can go straight in and drive around the back, and not a lot of people have realised that. So you have that 180 degree turn and then 90 degree through a narrow gate. But you, there are two gates there, and if you go through the first one, it's only a 90 degree turn from the road into the first one, and then you have to drive all the way around to the back of the thing, which is where the overflow vehicle spawn area is. But yeah, it's, the, as I said, this map is a lot easier because there aren't gates. 
Uh, what happened to my straw? Oops. That's weird. Okay. Weirdness going on with the straw. Oh, there we go. 1100 litres. Um, so yeah, there's the only gates on this map are on, into uh, animal um, pastures. Outside of that, you're really just open entrances. Saxthorpe Park is another, or sorry, Sax, Saxthorpe Farms is another interesting new map, also UK, but um, it's rather than having sort of hedgerows and where am I going with this? Let's uh, back this up. Um, rather than having hedgerows and walls and fences, it has sort of raised edges around the field. I can't think of a better way, a best way to describe it. But um, let's go here. Um, what you would find on Saxthorpe Farm is um, instead of this hedge being here, there's a little mound that you have to drive over. Usually scrubland, there's a gap between, you know, gap at, at, the, you know, at the entrance to a field. So you can drive between the mounds, but you, you have to go up and over on each side. They're not steep, but they're enough that if you're driving, you know, if you're a person driving down the country lane, you can't see into the field because, you know, there's dirt. Um, in the way with grass and scrub and sort of scrappy bushes on the top um, but it, it, it's kind of easier to get in and out of the fields because obviously there's there's an open area there's no gates so you don't have gate fence posts or gate posts getting in the way 